Some new information has recently come out regarding the safety of benzoyl peroxide skincare products. We're going to talk about it in this video. I know many of you have expressed concern regarding the safety of your benzoyl peroxide skincare products after everything that went down back in April 2024. And if you missed all of that, Valley Shore, an independent lab, posted publicly a non-peer-reviewed paper of research findings from their lab that revealed that over-the-counter benzoyl peroxide skincare products can contained high levels of benzene, a known human carcinogen. When people hear this, rightfully so, they get very scared. They think, oh my gosh, do I need to throw out my benzoyl peroxide products? Keep watching because we're gonna get into this further and hopefully by the end of this video, you will have some reassurance. At the time when this information was made public, it got a lot of media attention. Coincidentally, at the same time this was being published was the annual American Academy of Dermatology meeting, a really big meeting where dermatologists, not just from all over the US, but from all over the world actually come to get up to date on the latest in dermatology, get CME credits, hear from people in industry. So it even got coverage there. Now, Valley Shore is an independent lab and they have come under attack for using questionable methodologies. And with regards to this particular study, which again was not peer reviewed, so no one was able to critique how the study was done before it was published to the public, this particular lab has come under criticism in the past for using questionable testing methodologies. And with this paper in particular, they expose the benzoyl peroxide products to very, very extreme conditions above and beyond what is realistic for everyday use and how these products are intended to be used. When benzoyl peroxide is heated up at extreme temperatures, it will degrade into benzene. So they conducted the study in a way in which they heated the benzoyl peroxide up under extreme temperature conditions and got benzene. This is not the first time Valley Shore has published their independent, non-peer-reviewed research findings of detecting benzene in various over-the-counter products. You'll recall a few years ago, there was a whole hullabaloo around their detecting benzene in sunscreen. They've also come out finding benzene in hand sanitizer as well as dry shampoo. Back in December of 2022, the FDA actually issued them a letter highlighting many deficiencies efficiencies with how they conduct their laboratory studies. The other thing definitely worth pointing out here is that at the time they made their uh, research findings of detecting benzene in benzoyl peroxide acne products using the methodology where they exposed it to extreme temperatures, they also did not disclose to the public a conflict of interest, and that is that the CEO of Valley Shore has a patent on a shelf stable benzoyl peroxide. But recently, two new peer reviewed published studies have come out which offer results that are very reassuring regarding the safety of over-the-counter benzoyl peroxide skincare products. One of the studies was from the National Health and Nutrition Survey. They compared benzene levels in the blood of um, 14 people who had used benzoyl peroxide compared to 65 people who had not, and the benzene detection in the blood was no different between these two groups. The other study was much larger it looked at the electronic health records of over 27,000 patients who were using benzoyl peroxide versus 27,000 patients who were not. This study demonstrated there was no increased risk of cancers in people using benzoyl peroxide compared to people who were not. And these include both cancers of the blood, which benzene is more associated with, as well as what are called solid tumors, so non-blood cancers. No increased risk of either in people using benzoyl peroxide. These studies indicate that the detection of benzene and benzoyl peroxide products exposed to high temperatures is not of clinical significance, either in terms of uh, blood benzene levels or risk of cancers. Mind you, this is consistent with clinical experience of dermatologists who prescribe, recommend benzoyl peroxide day after day after day after day for acne patients for years and years and years with no indication of an increased risk of any kind of harm to human health, such as cancers or having high levels of benzene. As I said at the beginning of the video, when exposed to high temperatures, as was the case in the Valashore study, benzoyl peroxide absolutely 
can degrade into benzene, but just remember that those extreme conditions are not very likely in terms of what you are exposing your products to. Now, there are many other deficiencies in the Valley Shore study. I highly, highly, highly suggest you watch a video from Lab Muffin Beauty Science. She really breaks down a lot more of the problems with their study. It is definitely, definitely worth a watch. Um, she brought to light things that I didn't necessarily even pick up on reading their paper. So I highly recommend it. I will link it down below in the description box. Out of an abundance of caution, and honestly, just as a general routine measure, not just for your benzoyl peroxide products, but for skincare, makeup, cosmetics in general, just use common sense when it comes to how you store them don't leave these things in the car. A car can get very hot. Remember, unfortunately, sadly, devastatingly so, children and pets die when left locked in a car. You, you've heard the horror stories, okay? But I live in Texas, it gets so hot here that to leave anything in your car, good luck, uh, it, it's, it's gonna boil it. I mean, even the, even the car interior takes a beating with the heat and the sun here. So don't leave your skincare products, don't leave your sunscreen in the car. Um, when it gets to a really hot temperature, it can compromise uh, the stability of the active ingredients. It can compromise the preservative systems, make the product you know separate out, not spread on the skin properly. So it's just not a good idea to do that. Recently, I put out a video on how to tell if your sunscreen is expired. That's definitely worth a watch. And a key uh, recommendation I made in that video is, you know, don't leave sunscreen in the car. Also, discard any old, unused, expired benzoyl peroxide products. For example, if you're just strolling down memory lane and you come across a bottle of your old proactive in your hope chest, I don't know, don't use that, okay? It's probably not good. It's gonna be irritating. This video is intended to bring to light the new research, which honestly we all know is not gonna get the immediate attention, but the new research that is reassuring that benzoyl peroxide containing products do not pose harm when used as intended for exposure to benzene, or risk of cancers. Now, despite the points I've made in this video, some people are going to continue to be skeptical. They're gonna say, well, who cares? Just don't use benzoyl peroxide, not worth it. May not be worth it to you, but benzoyl peroxide is really, really effective for acne, a game changer. It is one of the oldest, most widely used topicals for acne. It's very effective. And one of the reasons why we love it even more as dermatologists, is that A, it helps us to not have to rely so heavily on antibiotics. If we use it along with antibiotics, it decreases the risk that the bacteria on our skin on our, throughout our body become resistant to those antibiotics. So it's a really, really, really valuable tool that we have been using for years and years, I mean, years and years and years. Um, it's not perfect, you know, it can be drying, irritating. Benzoyl peroxide formulations have come a long way. And I'm really glad that more people have looked critically at the Valishore study, asked for a repeat from verified testing methodologies, and other dermatologists have taken the initiative to go as far as to genuinely look into, well, are our patients being exposed to benzene unnecessarily? Are they at, uh, you know, an, an increased risk for cancers, and it does not appear to be so. These studies were really well done. They were peer-reviewed. Even though the peer-reviewed process is definitely flawed, um, it's still important because that gives other experts in the field an opportunity to look at the methodologies, critique them, ask for you know additional evidence where needed, ask for additional testing types before it becomes published. Publishing non-peer-reviewed findings to the general public, especially with such an inflammatory headline suggesting exposure to um, carcinogens is very detrimental because it engenders more mistrust in the medical community and mistrust in established effective therapies 
it's just uh, all around problematic. All right, guys, hope this video was helpful to you all and that you enjoyed it. If so, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.